Today we have the B Fight 250 Quad, and this one's by Aurora RC, kindly sent by Gearbest. Now, as some of you may have noticed, it's been a couple of months since I've flown regularly. Time to get this train moving, and we'll talk about this quad in a bit. Let's see what the out of the box performance is like. This is completely stock PIDs. I've added a receiver and set up my endpoints and flight modes. It's a little loose, but yeah, I'll try it.
Okay, so first impressions, pretty good. It's a fine flying quad. I couldn't quite put my finger on it at first, but it's the combination of a fairly aggressive rate and a loose tune on there. Not bad, just quite free and loose, along with a super sensitive throttle. It's got loads of power. All came together and made it feel like a, a much bigger quad. A six feet concrete jungle really didn't help me feel at ease on 4S there, so this is on 3S. And everything felt a lot more normal and in control. Now I did notice, normally when you fly in a quad that's tuned fairly loose and free, like this one feels like it is to me, um, that's on 4S. When you drop it to 3S, it's usually really sloppy. And similarly, if it's tuned really tight and clean and precise on 3S, you put a forest in there and you, you can get some wobbles out of it and it's usually, usually a little too much. There's a nice balance in between the two, which I generally tend to set at so it's got a bit more versatility. Now, this one didn't feel sloppier or looser at all in, in 3S, on 3S I should say, than it did 4S. So I'm putting that loose, fluid feeling down to the props for the moment. Now I've never flown any of these props before. They are Gemfan 5152s, so pretty aggressive pitch there. A wide paddle that twists down towards a fine tip at the end, and it's a downward pointing tip. And I think that is possibly the difference to the feeling I'm getting here. So I took them outside with a bit more space to get a better impression of what they felt like throughout the full throttle range. So this is 3S 1300m, just doing some mild circuits around here to get a feel for the cyclic and it wasn't until I really got it out here and managed to punch out a little bit and get it turning left and right transition through the coordinated turns a little bit you can tell it's just got a little bit of roll wobble uh, certainly on 3S that can probably be sorted by just raising the roll pids a little bit but it flies predictably and has plenty of power for anything but really insane punch outs and 3S with these props certainly seems a little bit more capable than most 3S 250 quads running on 2300 kV motors and while flying it line of sight that little bit of roll wobble isn't detectable at all. It's only when you fly at FPV, really. That shows you it's not too far out. This is at the end of a 3S tired battery, and it still felt like it got plenty of pop. Moving on to 4S, where this quad is definitely most happy at, you can still tell it's got that little bit of roll wobble um, when you're transitioning from left to right coordinated turns. Now that aspect not changing drastically between 3S and 4S tells me that the props have definitely got a, a large play in the field here. Now without doing any side-by-side -side tests it's hard to tell for sure but it certainly feels like it's got tons of power and loads of torque, definitely on par if, if not better than the other 250s I've got. The following punch outs that you're seeing here really aren't hitting full throttle and if they are they're barely doing it for a split second. And When you do get stabby on the throttle the voltage drop really isn't that bad considering how fast you're going and there's tons of torque and bite when you do decide to feed it back in and get a recovery. Now, I could have done with a few more degrees of camera tilt for flying really aggressive like this, but it's just insanely fun to punch out in air mode, drop the throttle and just hang. Now, I'm sure it hasn't escaped you that the cameras tend to black and white while I was out here. Now there's plenty of light, but the contrast between the light and the huge dark sky is obviously what's playing havoc with it. Bit of a surprise after handling the car park with these, but a quick check shows that it was set to auto and not colour. I'll show you to change that in a second. Now it's obvious there's a bit more break up here than there was in the previous spot, but I'm flying from inside the car. All the FPV here is from the comfort of the little car in the corner there, just down there. Plus, this is only running a dipole, no clover leaves here. And as UK guys are aware, the weather has been absolutely terrible. We've barely got rid of winter, it's just had snow again. So thanks Jab for driving us around that night, I can't thank you enough. It was way too cold to get out for more than a couple of minutes. It's certainly among the better HS 1177 cameras I've used. And although the OSD menu button on the back of the camera is a little bit clunky to use and also a little bit tricky to get at without removing the screws on the frame, I do love that there are no extra button panels or pigtail cables that need to be removed or even required at all. You can just change the settings where you are. Now I'd actually just ordered one of these cameras for another build from Banggood so I'm super pleased that it works this well. Okay, I haven't really, well I haven't flown this line of sight so far apart from a quick hover, I've been flying at FPV and I've barely opened it up. So, let's see if I can not trash it.
Jeez. Super windy up there, it makes me nervous. feel too comfy letting rip all open with this. Okay. Okay, wow. Bit of a knee trembler, but yeah, nice. Let's see what these props are like inverted. Ah, wow! Decent! Wow! I can't see well. I need some lights on this, I think. Probably some different colour props at the front. Put some lights on it, but the power, power invert is decent. Three quid. This flies phenomenally well. It's as light as any other quad I've got, and it's certainly as fast as. My only semi issue is the four in one ESC, really, but that's one of the issues that I need to put 20 30 flights through it and see if there's going to be an issue there. It certainly helps make it light. I don't know what my battery voltage is like, so I'm probably going to call it quits there. No issues with just feathering in the throttle for changing, so this is going to be really awesome with some 3D props on it. little quad. Woof! B5 220. Now, there's not much place to put a receiver in here, not much space to put a receiver in here, so I've had to stick one on top at the moment, and I didn't have anything that was small enough to go in there that was going to give me long range either, so I've got this beefcake on, on, on the top of it for the moment, but yeah. 
I have, there's nothing really negative to say about it. Throwing one ESC possibly for a 3D rig isn't a great idea. Um, I've never had a good performance out of it, but there's no complaints over that one. It keeps it light as well and nice and nice and clean, really clean build. Speed light. Rawr. We'll see how the quality is like, see if I can pop that ESC in 20 flights or so. <laughs> That's what normally happens with flooring ones when you try 3D room. But I'm, I'm itching to get some 3D props on that now. No camera tilt. Just because I'm flying line of sight 3D. And when I'm on bit, when I'm inverted, you'll get a flat camera rather than being inverted with the camera pointing down at the floor. Since this was so damn fine at playing 3D with those horrible non-3D stock props, horrible for 3D non-stock non props, I'm going to try the 3D props. These are DAL 3Rs. See the side profile, the profile is completely flat. You kind of like bash the air out of the shape rather than coerce it slowly. Super confident in this wind. Call that a day. It was uh, <laughs> definitely losing a bit of power towards the end there, but yeah, it's um, it's an absolute beast. to 3D, absolute beast. It's not really designed for 3D at all. The motors are a bit wider than I'd normally go for it, um, but it's it's almost flawless performance in inverted. Don't you clean it with mud? So yes, easy to tell that I'm digging this one. The out of the box performance is really good. It's not lacking on any components at all. And the price is seriously competitive for the performance that you get. 
if you tried to build the same spec quad from components, you'd have a real hard time coming in for the £93 that this has sold for when it arrived. I think it's currently at about 98 for the no receiver version, but still at that, can you put the same quad together for that money? It wasn't all totally smooth sailing though, there's, there's a couple of little negatives here and there. Firstly, I had trouble binding with this one. Now it was a bind and fly version, so you had your own receiver but I couldn't actually bind with the receiver. After trying a few receivers and binding out of the model and putting it back in, uh, I figured it was the model that was stopping it binding. Basically, I couldn't bind with any receiver until the white wire tap from the VTX was disconnected. This goes to the flight controller, so it allows you to change the power of the VTX from your RC transmitter. Now this threw me in a loop at first, as there was multiple receivers that didn't work, but all that means at the moment is I don't have control of the VTX power from the transmitter. It must be done directly via the push buttons and the LED display on the VTX itself. This most likely won't be an issue with SBUS receivers on the ready-to-fly versions. It was slightly confusing at first, but there are clear instructions to decipher what colour and how many LEDs relate to what channel and VTX power you're on. And reassuringly, all the soldering throughout the model is exceptionally clean for the price range and obviously done with care. The ESC is a 30 amp with a 35 amp burst and that's also stackable sitting at the bottom so it's well out of the way of harm from any tumbles of which this one's taken a lot of so far. It's also D-Shot 600 compliant so there's zero calibration with smooth throttle range and really pleasing resolution throughout the entire range too. And at the heart of this beast we have an F3 omnibus board with an onboard Betaflight OSD. That gives you the flight battery voltage at all times but you can also change the PIDs via that as well. Now while that's not a super new F4 board, it does have a microSD slot for a massive black box capacity and runs Beta Flight 3 with plenty of CPU capacity to spare. I would probably only buy F4 boards if building, but that's more of a performance for cost thing, not an F3 board lacking in many ways. I certainly wouldn't upgrade an F3 board to F4 in any of my quads if it was working flawlessly. Instead I'd just spend that money on LiPos. So that brings us round to the camera. Now before I'd said that this was a HS1177, and Gearbest site does actually say that, but further down the page underneath it also says it's a 960H camera. Now I'm not sure if the HS1177 listing is a mistake, or whether this is a variant of those that happens to be widescreen and uses a different sensor. This is a 960H sensor, so that's 960 by 480 pixels. I do feel it's a lot better than any of the HS1177s that I've used personally. Colour is realistic and once wide dynamic range is enabled and auto changed to colour, contrast stayed locked in well in all lighting conditions. I'm not sure of the actual field of view, but it did seem to be quite sensitive to a precise up tilt angle for specific speeds, so certainly not larger than 120, 140. On the other hand, I didn't feel particularly blinkered flying in small spaces and around pillars in the car park, so it probably isn't smaller than 120 either. All of this is mounted to a thick 4mm frame that has cutouts along the arms for efficiency. Now, there's no issues with this in plenty of crashes so far, although I can't actually see any spares for this available anywhere. Hopefully that will happen, because I think it's an excellent design, but I do think it needs a slight change in the camera mount too. The arms can be replaced just by removing two bolts, and the stack remains completely untouched. It's a super low profile design and light too, at 275 grams without the LiPo or props but that also makes it extremely difficult to fit a regular receiver inside or under the top plate. This is a change that I'd like. Now normally, now normally I'd just add slightly longer vertical spaces, but due to the camera swivel mount held in place between the base plate and the top plate, it's not possible to extend those, otherwise the camera just flops around. So some longer vertical mounts for the camera would be needed for that. So if fitting a receiver inside is an issue for you, I might be tempted to go for one of the bind and fly options. Now I have read that a few people had issues with the ready to fly version receivers, simply they're just not giving enough range and that's often the case with these tiny receivers. This is why I'd like a little bit larger space so instead of having to put my full, full range receiver on top, it would still fit inside, they'd be even more robust. I can't finish without mentioning the motors. I've certainly never come across Flubfly brand before, so I presume these are rebranded motors with an odd attempted play on the words fly and love. I don't really think it works at all, but once spinning you can't see that and they run smooth, quiet and true and have outstanding power, regardless of the prop choice. So while it's not quite perfect, it's really not far off on any factors and coming in at £100 offers superb performance all around while being cheaper than a budget DIY build at the same price. I fully recommend this quad to anyone looking for a first brushless 5 inch prop quad who wants 3S and 4S 
definitely not 5, don't put a 5S or a 6S through this, you're going to kill things, but specifically doesn't want to build or solder. All you have to do with this one is put in your receiver and bind. So, that's all for this one, hopefully you'll join me in the next. Any questions, drop them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Mm -hmm.